John Mandel, Senior Vice President of American Honda. John, Honda has quietly been taking over the, the whole uh, environmental stand. Toyota have, seems to have a lot of presence, but you guys are in it quite, quite, quite a bit of parts. Tell me everything that you've got going. Yeah, about the environment. Going back to Mr. Honda's charge of blue skies for our children. So it's been an internal theme of ours for a long, long time. Having said that, we continue to push on a lot of different fronts, whether it's uh, the first electric vehicle, first natural gas vehicle, the cleanest natural gas vehicle, uh, hybrid, first hybrid with Civic and now a, a Ford, uh, to fuel cell technology. So we push on a lot of different fronts. You know what I love, and I just haven't seen as much advertising or as much in the media as I really think it should be given is the Honda Civic natural gas that has the complementing fill that goes right in your own garage. Right. And, um, you know, we just expanded that. We, we, tested it in, we tested it for a long time, but then we rolled it out quietly in California last year. We just announced sale now in, in New York uh, this fall. And uh, we're looking at other markets to roll it out. But it is a, a phenomenal system. Uh, it means, essentially, you, can, you never have to go to the gas station. It's a home refueling device. It works off your natural gas line in your house, refuels your car overnight. Uh, very simple to use. Uh, actually, easier than a gas pump to use. And this goes right to where you're thinking with hydrogen. Well, and, and that is that is a stepping stone, really, to getting consumers to use hydrogen technology. So refueling, um, refueling at home or refueling with something other than a liquid um, is, is a big step toward the hydrogen island. What do you need? And I've been asking pretty much every one of the manufacturers this. They've already seen who killed the electric car. <laughs> We don't want to see who killed the hydrogen car. What do you need, not just from your company, but from the, all companies from the United States, from globally? What do you need to make the hydrogen? Well, um, I, certainly, um, I, I think that, that industry, I'm sure at some point in the past, someone, when they saw the first internal combustion engine in a carriage, 120 years ago, said, well, that's great, but where are you going to get the fuel for it? Um, you know, I can feed my horses anywhere, but who's going to chase you with a gas can? Um, that infrastructure built over time. But, you know, we, we are, we're not depending upon or waiting for anyone else to develop that infrastructure. We've also uh, developed what we call home energy stations, uh, which actually produces hydrogen in the home. Uh, and as a byproduct, produces electricity for the home and water for the home. And you have it in solar or electricity. So we, we can do it both uh, in solar or electricity. So That's if you correct. live in the sun or if you live in Michigan. That's correct. So we're, we're, we're kind of looking at and, and the, the whole concept of natural gas and fill has gotten us to, to into that thinking. So um, it would be great, but we're not going to depend upon society or industry or anybody else to bring that along. We're developing a parallel path that would allow people who want to use hydrogen uh, as, as a mode of transportation uh, to be able to produce it uh, at home, very similar to, to fill. And as you said, producing it either from natural gas or water um, and, and reversing it and with byproducts that are very helpful to running at home as well. You know, General Motors has been in the news uh, for uh, over a year now with this Nissan Renault merger thing. Um, I happen to think that you have a lot more synergistic values with General Motors than perhaps Nissan Renault. Any talks, any, anything that you and General Motors might be doing together? Um, no, um, we you know we get a lot of questions on would we be willing to share technology uh, with them. We, we're actually very willing to talk to anyone about uh, technology. There's a bigger purpose here, and it's about the environment. Uh, and, and we've kind of always been in that area. It's, as I said earlier in my talk, it's, it's really not about a race with competitors. It's a, it's a race for ourselves. Uh, it is kind of this uh, finding the ultimate solution for mobility without harming the environment or depleting all of our natural resources. Yeah. So we're happy to talk to anybody, but no, I can tell you that uh, we're, we're, we're quietly blazing our own path there. On, on, on your automobile manufacturing plants, it is becoming 
it's a big deal now to try and be zero landfill. And so you're, people are reducing, reusing, recycling. Subaru is selling their 1% left over to a waste energy company that then turns it into electricity. How are you guys doing on the on manufacturing side? We announced um, as part of our initiative of right. reducing greenhouse gases, uh, not only from vehicle emissions, but also from, from plants. Um, and we're doing this ahead of any industry regulation or anything else because it's, again, part of what we believe. So exactly. we've always been very, very conscious about you know, what we use in the environment, where we build plants, right, how we build plants, and, and the impact of those vehicles. If you've ever been to our facilities in Ohio, uh, Maryville or East Liberty, um, you, you'll know that there are soybeans being grown there that are being shipped back to Japan and we're putting back in the environment. It's a very green, green facility, and that plant was built 25 years ago. Is it good? Um, you'll, you'll see continued pushes in our new plant facilities in Indiana, for example, and facilities around the world uh, to, to continue to ratchet that to the next level. So um, it's not a new strategy for us, uh, and it's, it makes me very proud to be working.